This is ESPR Boxing. Delighted, as always, to be joined by Dave Coldwell. Dave, um, thank you for your time. I know you last couple of people left in the arena. Um, thoughts on tonight? Another, another great show here in Birmingham. I've really enjoyed it. I love this venue, Resorts World. I've, I've been here quite a few times now for, for several shows. I was here at the last uh, Heaney Paul fight, yeah. and um, I thought that was a great fight. But this one tonight, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, the heart, the toughness that both men showed in there. That's that's what British boxing is about, you know, and um, Brad Paul's well deserved that, you know, I, th I thought Heaney got off to a really good start, first three rounds, very, very composed, got him on the end of the jab, got his range, I thought, okay, looks, he's improving here, and then after after the knockdown, Petro right hand, I thought uh, Brad Paul's absolutely battered him, you know, he, he really did, you know, give him a, a really tough night, it, it, there was a lot of difficult moments for Heaney in there, he kept digging in, kept digging in, couple of times it looked like he's gone but then the bell goes saves him um, and then I don't know if it was round nine and he, he, he catches poles with some good good body work and slowed him down hurt him slowed him down you think whoa hang on a minute this last couple of rounds are gonna be interesting now but Brad Poles just cranked it up and, and went through the years and got a fantastic stoppage there I feel sorry for Heaney because he, he gave it absolutely everything he had nothing left but what I've got to say is his fans are absolutely unbelievable. He gets stopped like that, and the fans are still still standing there, singing his name, you know, singing away and chanting for him. That's that's fantastic. That is. Yeah, look, a real kind of football atmosphere, and it was just you don't really kind of see that in boxing. You see people head for the rafters when yeah. their guy loses. So it was it was quite it was quite nice to see. Um, return of Chantel Cameron tonight. Yeah. Any any thoughts on that? Back to winning good ways. Fight, really good fight. Um, I thought the girl that she fought was very very tough, and I, I believe she's come up. Um, you know, she used to be a, um, a featherweight or something. So so she's naturally small. And I think you could tell that in there. But she stood toe to toe with her, yeah. slinging away. It was a really really good fight. Really entertaining fight. A lot of quality in there. Um, but it, it, even though it was quite one-sided, Chantel got hit. You know, it was a tough night for her. Um, but I thought the scorecard, 95, 95, yeah. May, I was like, what, what are you watching? You know, there's always one idiot scorecard that's, that's coming off on a night. But, but other than that, you know, yes, yeah, she won clearly uh, a good performance to get back. I didn't know whether to bring the scorecard up. I didn't want to annoy you even more, but here we are. We'll move on. Just um, a couple more from me, Dave. Um, Terence Crawford, Madrimov, only a couple of weeks away now. Um, boxing being boxing, people are talking about other fights involving Crawford and whatever, but Crawford, Madrimov, have you got a prediction? Can you call this one? No, I ain't got a prediction because I'm, I'm a massive Crawford fan. love Crawford, and he's gone through the ways unbelievably. But there's, there comes a time when people that keep challenging themselves and testing themselves and keep going up in the divisions, run into that guy that's just not only good on that level ability-wise, but then they're just too too big. And Madrimov is, is, is big. He's a beast at 154, but he's very, very good. He's, he's not an average 154. He's, a, he's elite 154. You know, I would favour him to be any of the guys out there at 154. Um, and so Crawford's going in right at the top, right at the top end of the division. So hats off to Terence Crawford for that, um, testing himself to the max. Don't forget, he's getting older as well, you know. Um, it's not a foregone conclusion. So when people talk about the next fight, then, no, let's focus on this fight. If he wins that, then great. You know, if he wins that, then wow. I mean, I, I think I can't, he's one of my, my favourite fighters ever right now anyway, as it is. But if he was to win that as well, then it takes him to another level, you know, of, of where you're ranking him in, in, in the all-time greats. Yeah. Well, I'll message you on August the 4th. Maybe we can discuss other, other fights involving Terence Crawford. Final one from, from me, Dave. Um, fight people are talking about Canelo, Chris Eubank Jr. Does that fight excite you? Do you want to see that fight? Just a quick thought on that one. Uh, not really. Don't excite me at all. I, I was, I'll be honest with you, I was a little bit, huh? Really? Um, but fair play to Eubank. If he gets that, can't begrudge anybody for getting that Canelo payday. You yeah. can't. You can't because, because I don't care who it is. Nobody's, if, if anyone's getting a sniff of that payday, they're diving in, right? And everybody around them pushing them into that to get it. Is it a fight that a fight that excites me? No. Is it a fight where I look at Canelo and think, oh man, there's Benavidez there. That's what I want to see. I don't want to be seeing you fighting Chris Eubank Jr. That's where I'm at with it. But 
Canelo's got a fantastic resume, so who am I to say to Canelo, you can't have a game? It's like when people are talking about um, Inoue is fighting uh, TJ uh, Dehini. It's like, your initial reaction is, what? But, but then you look at his resume and who he's been fighting, and you think, well, do you know what? It kind of like, it can have a night off, it can have an easy fight, do you know what I mean? People are all right with that. Dave Corbett, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. Nice Cheers, Thanks very much, Dave. Cheers. Cheers.